Once again, Syracuse loses early in the ACC tournament. You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and last night was not a fun one for Syracuse basketball. The Orange lose 83-65 to against NC State. They're out of the ACC tournament. They, barring a conspiracy, will not be in March Madness this year for the third straight season. No dancing, no tournament, possible NIT, but I don't think anyone really in this moment cares about the NIT. I think going forward we will. But nevertheless, it is a disappointing feeling to say the least because Syracuse once again gets bounced early in the ACC tournament and it just sucks. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. So, quick story here for you. I um, had to watch this game on a dummy stream. It was midnight for me in my time zone when the game started. And I watched the whole game. And normally I I tweet these games. Normally I tweet them because, you know, I want to give people my thoughts about what's going on. I try to be a little bit funny. But I realized early on I didn't, I, I shouldn't even bother tweeting because I was, my stream was minutes behind everyone else's. Like, if there was some sort of buzzer beater in this game, then I would have been, I would have said something about a couple minutes later than everyone else. They probably would have been at the press conference by the time I had seen it. Nevertheless, I watched. Game ended around 2 in the morning in my time. And I think I, I felt the same as most people from what I saw, which is just disappointment disappointment and that's really what coach Autry said in his press conference that's what he said there were a lot of good questions that were asked to coach Autry about you know was this year easier or tougher than you expected being a first year head coach what were some growing opportunities for you and the team and coach Autry even said you know those are good questions guys but right now we can't even think about it They couldn't even think about it. They're so disappointed. I want to stress, I don't think it was an effort problem with Syracuse. I don't. I think they just got outplayed. And NC State proved that on this particular night, they were the better basketball team. The Wolfpack won 83-65 over the Orange. We're talking all about it here on Locked on Syracuse. tough but what went wrong what went wrong for this team well let's just start when I thought that the game was over I thought the game was over with the Judah technical foul let me just be very clear here Judah Mintz was whacked across the face which leads to a transition opportunity for NC State which they capitalize on The Wolfpack are at this point, there's about 13 minutes left in the game, lead by 14. And Judah Min starts complaining to the refs. He starts complaining to the ref that he missed a call. And there were a lot of missed calls in this one. Like Chris Bell early in the game with a phantom foul, gave him two fouls, so he was in early foul trouble. There were a lot of missed calls. The referees were certainly not perfect. 
but definitely not the reason why Syracuse lost this game. You can't blame the referees when you're when you lose by 18. But back to my train of thought about why this game was over. You can just tell from the body language of the players and from Judah's expression that things were just not going Syracuse's way in that moment. And of course, the referee calls a technical foul. You know, I hate that in sports. I hate that so much. The referee knows he missed a call and he has the audacity to then call a technical because the guy is complaining about it. Normally I say, don't complain about fouls, but if your eye is literally shut like this and you're a freaking pirate, I would complain about a foul too because he didn't shut it himself. And the referee says, you know what, Judah, you can't complain about fouls. Even though I missed one and your eye is closed and you have to come out of the game to get your eye fixed up, I'm going to call a technical foul on you when your team is losing by 14 at this point, basically giving him the middle finger. You missed a call. It happens. Don't then just give the guy a technical foul. That, by the way was when the game was over. The game was over in that moment. And I know Syracuse later on cut it down to 10, but you never really believed, did you? You never really believed. You wanted to, but you probably didn't. You can just tell. Go watch. A lot of heads down, complaining. I don't blame them for complaining. It was an off night for Syracuse, and they picked the last two games they've had off nights, and they picked two pretty bad spots to have them. The last game of the regular season where this team was starting to creep back into the bubble conversation, lay an egg in Clemson. They did not play up to their abilities. And then last night, against a team they've already beaten twice, They were back and forth in the first half. They came out hot to begin the second. And then NC State pulled away with a 21-2 run. And in the middle of it was the Judah Mintz technical foul, which should not have been a technical foul. The referee should have just let Judah blow off steam because his eye is closed. But nevertheless, they called it. And of course, NC State hits the free throws. And that was the game. That's when the game was over. But there's still plenty more to get to about this game and what the road ahead looks like and what Syracuse needs. We're going to discuss it right after this. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Houston Cougars can only be described as an armada. This top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after their first season in the Big 12. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Mark your calendar for the Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown Show Monday, March 18th at 7 a.m. Eastern. Experts Andy Patton and Isaac Shade will break down their brackets and discuss everything that you need to know to fill out a winning bracket. I know Syracuse isn't going to be on it. And prepare for this year's NCAA tournament. Find the Locked On Bracket Breakdown on Monday, March 18th on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer. The Orange fall in their first game of the ACC tournament, 83-65 to to NC State last night, ending their season until a possible NIT berth. They will almost certainly not be in March Madness for the third straight year. 
As I said off the top, barring a conspiracy to put Syracuse in, which I don't think will happen. What went wrong? The Judaman's technical foul, I thought, was the moment where the game was lost for Syracuse. That was the moment I thought it was lost. But as far as what really went wrong, Coach Autry said it. Turnovers and rebounds. Turnovers and rebounds. I have it right here that Syracuse gave up 16 offensive rebounds to NC State. And how many times in that second half? This is what drove me nuts. How many times in the second half did NC State miss a shot? And the ball caromed off the rim in a weird way. And Syracuse would go up with two hands and couldn't catch the basketball. You know, it's like that that Baylor guy at the end of the tournament where you go up with two hands to get a rebound and you come down with it. Well, how many times did we see Syracuse get their hands on the ball and not come away with possession? It seemed like it happened all the time and it would lead to an NC State three-pointer immediately after. And apologies for my voice being a little bit hoarse. The game ended around 2 o'clock a.m. my time. And I'm recording this about six hours later. So apologies that my, my voice is going a little in and out here. It just was so frustrating how many times that happened. And the other thing that killed him that Coach Autry said was turnovers. Syracuse had 17 turnovers. A team that's one of the best in turnover margin had 17 against NC State. And I thought there was a really good question that was asked in the press conference, which was, you know, was NC State seeing Syracuse for the third time? Did that really factor into what happened? And Coach Autry dismissed it. He said, no, NC State just played better. They played better. I kind of agree with him on it, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, you can, if you see a team three times, you can anticipate them more about what they're going to do. You can kind of see like, okay, when Quadir Copeland drives down the lane and turns his head, you know where he's going to pass it, which... Felt like a lot of times in this game was to NC State. I don't have the number of turnovers that Copeland had on the top of my head, but it seemed like a lot. Oh, it was a lot. I was right. See, I love when I then check the stats just to make sure that my my theory is correct. Quadir Copeland had six turnovers. Six. And I love Quadir Copeland, and he should have been the sixth man of the year because he's a true sixth man. But you can't have six turnovers. And you got to work on your decision making. There were multiple instances where he drove down to the lane and just would throw it to the other team. He would just throw it to the other team. Would he panic? I don't know if necessarily panic is the right word. He would just throw it to NC State. You can't do that. There were other instances where Syracuse would be moving with pace and there would just be an errant pass where it would once again, kind of like the rebounds, it would carry them off their hands because they couldn't catch it. Did someone put like rub banana peel off of these guys going into the game? Did someone just take a banana and just brush it all over their hands? Because they couldn't catch the ball. Thank goodness these guys aren't playing for Syracuse football. Oh, we'd be screwed next season if they were the receivers. They couldn't catch anything. And I don't really know what the the solution to that is. I don't know. The ball's on the ground. You have it. And you lose it. That's really... that that The moment they lost was the Judah Mintz technical. But the reasons this team lost in general were turnovers and offensive rebounds. And those offensive rebounds and turnovers kind of stemming from... They can't catch the basketball when they have a chance to. It's just disappointing all around. Because you want to believe that this team is better than it actually is. 
And I think here's the main takeaway of everything. You want to believe that they're better than they are. This team doesn't have enough. As presently constructed, if they were to go into next season, I don't think they have enough. And it's it sucks because next year is tournament or bust. There are no excuses. I like Judah Mintz, and I really hope he returns. But he does have his flaws. Right? He's still not a great shooter. I like J.J. Starling, but he's really not consistent enough. Only nine points. He's not consistent enough. I like him. I'd rather him be a third option. Chris Bell, he's the only real shooter on the team, but I think he sometimes is asked to do more than what he's capable of. I think he's a really good shooter, but when I talked about the keys to the tournament, I was saying, you know, they're 9-0 when he scores at least 18 points. Chris Bell is not someone who's going to average 18 a game. He's not that He's not that dude. He's good in spurts, but you can't ask him to be a superstar here. And I like Copeland, but Copeland has his faults. He needs to work on his decision-making. He's very good in his role, and I don't necessarily want to see that role change, but it might change next year. He might be the starting point guard next year. And I like Malik Brown, but he's asked to play center. He's not a center. He's 6'8". He's a power forward, asked to play center. Not his fault. Naheem McLeod got hurt, and they have no one else behind McLeod. But that's just how it is. You want to believe, and, and everyone else on the team, I mean, Kyle Cuff did, did nothing. Justin Taylor, I mean, nothing really. I mean, it, what else? Peter Carey, I, I, he played one minute. And that's about it. It's so funny because every time I look at these box stores, Benny Williams is still listed on it. You just want to believe that these players are better than they are. You really do. And they're not. They're quite frankly not good enough. Which is going to lead to the next topic, which is what does Syracuse need to do from here? Amazon Fire TV is the place I get the top streaming apps and channels for movies like TV, like for watching Syracuse games and the NIT tournament coming up just around the corner. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend of baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash TV. Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car to the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. 
Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer in the Orange. Lost NC State 83-65 to last night in the in their first game of the ACC tournament. Once again, the Orange get bounced. They now have a 5-9 and nine all-time record in the ACC tournament. So officially, it's been 10 years, and they average a half win a tournament, which I know you can't win a half game, but the bottom line is this team has never won two games in this tournament. Even the year in 2014 where they started 25-0, and 0, they still haven't done it. And as Coach Autry has said, as I have said, as you're probably thinking, you're disappointed. So what does what does the road ahead look like? And I'm going to discuss a lot more about it on Friday. But I think the main thing we need to we need to we need to remember this: the transfer portal, while it's great, is not something that is guaranteed to work out in anyone's favor. And what do I mean by that? Well, we can say we want this player gone. We want this player to stay. Ultimately, it's their decision, right? And right now with the players, they're currently on the roster. And you only have a limited number of scholarship spots available. So you can we can sit here and we're going to do the exercise, especially tomorrow, of who do we want to stay and who we can toss aside and let go. But at the end of the day, if they want to stay, we can't do anything about it. They have to stay and they will take up a scholarship spot. But what they really need, and I, I, I talked about it at the end of the Clemson game, this team needs size and they need shooting. Those are the tangible needs for this team. How many players in this team are you scared of shooting the basketball? How many? Chris Bell? And who else? Go on, I'll wait. No one? Well, you'd be correct. There's no one else on this team that stares you shooting the basketball. None. It'd be nice if Syracuse in the transfer portal can get some guys who can shoot 40% from deep. That would be nice. And the other thing that they need is size. They need size. Simple as that. They have a a player playing center at 6'8". That can't happen next year. And people will say Naheem McLeod. Well, Naheem McLeod cannot play 30 minutes a night. Nehemiah McLeod can't play 30 minutes a night, so they're going to need a starting center. That's going to increase their size. And then you have Donnie Freeman coming in, who's listed around 6'10". There you go. I think the problem is solved pretty easily if they just get a starting center. And then Malik Brown could either play small forward or he can come off the bench. Assuming he stays. And then they need shoot. Preferably, you'd get a center who can also shoot. Kind of like a P.J. Hall. But it's a lot to ask for to get P.J. Hall. I'm not saying him, just like a guy like him. And P.J. Hall, if you don't know, he's a star player for Clemson. Kicking butt this year. Torched Syracuse a couple... uh, Torched Syracuse last Tuesday. That would be ideal if Syracuse did a guy like him. But really, you want to know the truth? Do you want to know the truth? The hard truth. They need better players. Top to bottom, better players. I'm sorry, but not being able to put two hands on a basketball and secure possession? I don't know. I don't know. 
Not enough shooting. You need better players. Can't rebound, better players. Yeah, it sounds lazy. That's the hard truth. This is the third straight year that they're not going dancing. It's the third straight time. When are we going to say that's not the issue? When? Please, tell me. Yeah, the tangible needs. We know them. They need size. They need shooting. But really, what they need is just better players. Top to bottom. And we're going to talk more and more about that going forward. There's a long off season, and this might not be the end of Syracuse basketball this year. They did make progress, and we can be encouraged by that progress in the regular season. But still, when you look at the grand scheme of things, three straight years of turn of no tournament is completely unacceptable, and next year is literally do or die. If you go four years without the tournament, I, I don't I don't know what to do. At that point, you're starting to get into what once was. They're already creeping up on that. What once was a great basketball program. But I think next year they have a chance to change that, to get back to that type of program. But if they don't, they don't make the tournament at all. It's do or die. And they need better players. It's as simple as that. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know it was a tough way to go out. I hope the content was still good, though. And it still might not be the end for Syracuse basketball this season with the NIT, uh, with an NIT appearance possibly coming. If you like this video, click that like button. If you really liked it, subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so you can view it as soon as the video drops. We're going to be back tomorrow discussing more in depth with what Syracuse needs. Perhaps some players have already entered the portal. Would they be good fits? Plenty to discuss. Long off season ahead going forward for this team. We'll be back tomorrow.